I thought we would do is work on our hips a little bit. We're gonna work inside hips and also outside hips. A lot of back pain can come from that area, uh, especially if we're sitting down a lot, we can get some sciatic pain and that sort of thing. So hopefully this will help free things up. What it'll also do, added bonus, is improve our squat ability and uh, also help relieve stress. A lot of stress is carried through the hips and if we uh, help release that, it can help release stress in the body and sleep better. So lots of wins today. Excellent, Joe is back. Cool beans. So Hello. you're all right. What I thought we'd start with is a couple of movements, kind of like a warm up, and then we'll get into our stretches. So first movement, you've done this in the gym before. This is our kneeling circle. So we're going to be in a kneeling position. From there, we'll send one leg out. We'll rotate it around like it's doing a half circle. And we'll do about five-ish reps on one side. We'll do five reps on the other. Kind of step on front as well in case you're interested. We're trying to keep the body in between the hands rather than letting it scoop away to one side. I'm just gonna mute you here, Nora. Sorry, if you need anything, give me a wee wave and I'll catch you. Oh, there we go. Just a weird buzzing noise, I don't know what it is. It's okay. Anyone's butt cheeks cramping up there? Oh. <laughs> A little bit. Excellent. Cool. So now we've kind of got those butt muscles firing, uh, we're going to try and use that to help us relax the groin muscles. So we're going to be up on our feet uh, and probably going to get chopped off in the middle here. I want to be going pretty wide, uncomfortably wide with our feet. Now, our toes will duck out a little bit and we'll send our knees out over those toes just like a normal squat. So some people call this a horse squat, other people call it a sumo squat. We're going to do 10 controlled reps. Really, oh wow, got a good pop there. <laughs> uh, taking your time as you go down. find your range of motion here might be limited that's totally okay but we're still trying to work those knees out over the toes feel that inner groin kind of get challenged Fantastic. Now, hopefully, if your house is warm, after those simple movements, we're already getting pretty toasty. Our joints are kind of ready for a little bit of work. So, we're going to try and look at all angles of our hip. At the muscles that connect into the hip, and by addressing those, hopefully, we'll free it up. So, first big one that we all know is the quad. Now, when we're sitting down, our quads tend to get short and that shortness then pulls on the hip and pulls us into anterior pelvic tilt, okay? Think like Instagram or uh, just dysfunctional hip. 
So, what we're going to do, we're going to lie on our back on the floor. And from there, we're going to place this foot up beside the bum. Now you'll notice here my knee is well up off the floor. I'm also going to roll over onto my side. So, right heel up to my right butt cheek, rolling over onto my left hand side. From there, I'm going to try and put my right knee on the floor. And then I'm going to try and roll back. And hopefully then you'll get an awesome stretch down the front of your, your leg. Okay, if you don't get enough of a stretch, you can move your heel closer into your butt. Um, but give it a go first, see where you're at, and if you need any help, just give me a wave. Aiming to keep that knee down towards the floor and push the hip down towards the floor. Now both of them might be up and off, that's totally okay, but we're going to sit down there for a little bit. If you're not currently getting this on your quad, give me a little wave. Okay, I'll assume you're all either getting it spot on or you're all dead, so that's good. <laughs> Yes, nice. And we'll ease out of that side. And we'll try it on the other side. Same idea. You can roll over onto your side first. Pull that heel right into your butt. Use your hand to help. Push your knee down towards the floor. Oh, it's so much tighter. And then try to roll over. Feeling it right down the front of that leg. Focusing in on your breath, trying to let your hip open up, let that quad get a deep burn down the front. Nice. We'll go back to our first side, we'll do it once more each side now that we've got a rough idea of the position. See so if you can get your heel in closer to your butt. And rotate down. Oh my goodness. Oh, I think my foot's going to cramp as well. Mm. It's natural for your body to tense up when you're stretching, but what we're going to try and do is as we breathe out, relax those muscles that feel tensed. See if you can ease them, teach them how to relax and lengthen. As we're breathing, we're breathing through that belly. As we breathe in, it expands up and out. As we breathe out, it falls back down again. As we breathe in, it expands up and out. As we breathe out, it falls back in. Ease yourself back out of there. And do one more back on that other side. Most people will have one side tighter than the other. It depends on which leg is your dominant leg. Which one does more work. We also tend to have little habits, so when you sit on the sofa watching a movie, you'll quite often find you kind of sit over to one side. Your legs tuck under one way or the other. Or you always lean one way. Oh. You need to put that in the future. <laughs> Do we do that? No, not very often. Mm -hmm. Only when you're, not when you're driving. 
And ease back out. Lovely job. Okay, so quads, we can give that one a little tick. Now, the opposite of our quad is our hamstring, that's down the back of the leg. So, let's do that one next. Again, we're going to be on our back because it's nice and chilled out down there. And this is where you might need your tile. Okay, so the tile allows you to effectively lengthen your arms if you need to. Now, I have quite mobile hamstrings and I have quite long arms. So, I'm going to hold on to my foot. And from there, I'm going to lie back. And I'm going to try to... Straighten out my leg. Oh, oh it's really uncomfortable. So, <laughs> as I'm straightening this out here, I'm feeling it down my hamstring. I'm also getting a little bit of calf. Um, but you might find that you get just as much stretch kind of here. And you're just trying to straighten that leg. If you have that towel, you can loop it around and uh, do that same thing. Okay, we'll go about 45 seconds each leg. We're going to try and straighten it as much as you can. <laughs> yeah, if it just fills you with fear trying to straighten your leg, just ease yourself into it. Do like five seconds and then back out, and then five seconds and back out. Trick yourself into going that a little bit further. Oh, not so bad. <laughs> it's, it's hard to relax. It's hard to get your breath under control. But you can do it. Really trying to push that knee away from your chest and pull your ankle towards your chest. Let's, uh, we'll swap back over to the other side. Oh, I should have pop there. Oh, oh dear. I think this is my tighter side. <laughs> You'll probably find it easier if you drop your foot to the side, but we don't want to do that. We want to keep it in line. So you're almost getting yourself into a front split position. Encouraging yourself to try to straighten that leg, even if that means you do slow, controlled uh, movements, just to ease yourself into that position. And we'll relax. Very nice. So, quads, tick. Hamstrings, tick. Now, since we've done uh, a lot of work on our back, we're going to do one more on our back because it's easier that way. So we're going to lie on our back and pull our knee into our chest. And from there, we're going to push it over to the other side of your body. Now, if we lever that over, keeping your shoulders on the floor, hopefully we'll get a nice stretch through that butt cheek. I know that's an unusual thing to do is to rub your bum on camera, but uh, yeah, that's where we want to be. So about 45 seconds, if you lie on your back, pull that knee up to your chest. And then on over to your shoulder. And don't be afraid to play with the position a little bit. See what happens if you lower your knee down towards your hip. And what happens if you pull it up higher to your shoulder? Or what happens if you pull it further towards the floor? Or more towards the center of the body? Once you find the most disgusting part of it, then go there. Hold that for a little bit. Once you find that position, 
then try to push the hip down towards the floor. So you're trying to push your hip away from your knee. By creating that space, then we create a deeper stretch and we help free that hip back up again. And we'll ease back out of that and do the same on the other side. Pull that knee up to your chest, pull it on across the body, keeping your shoulders down. Oh. Same thing here, we're just going to explore that hip a little bit. My word, this is tight. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. And again, once you find your gnarly part of the stretch, try to push that hip down towards the floor, feel that hip open up, Sticking with a the theme, it's going to be on our back. What? <laughs> we've done our quads, we've done our hamstrings, we've even done our glutes. So all that's left is our groin. Mm. Technically, there's still our obliques, but anyway, hey, great. Going to lie on our back, our feet are together like glue. We're going to set the feet on the floor just like we were doing a sit up in the gym. But from there, we're just going to lie back. If you need to, you can put your hands on your knees to encourage them to go down towards the floor. Or if you've got heavy legs, then you're just going to let your legs fall towards the floor. Hopefully that groin is going to get a nice stretch. Again, probably rubbing my groin on camera is not a great idea. But anyway, we're just going to roll with it. It's fine. <laughs> so go here for about a minute, just letting those knees fall towards the floor. <laughs> and what you can do is you can play here with your foot position, you can pull it in closer to your butt, see if that gives you a better stretch, or you can try it further away from your butt, see if that gives you a better stretch. Once you find whichever one's best, you can go there. I personally find feet into my bum pretty good. Halfway. Again, just focusing here on breathing through your belly. That belly going up and out. As you breathe out, then let it sink back down. Breathing in, up and out. And breathing out, letting it fall. Nice, trying to pull those knees that little bit wider for the last five seconds. Three, two, one, and relax. Lovely. Now, if we were to sit in that butterfly position again, so we're on our bum, our body is up, and our knees are out wide, what we could do is try to reach over, and that will finish off the last sort of big muscle that connects into the hip. So we'll reach over as best we can. If you're finding that you're too tight and you're not really getting much of a stretch there, you could relax one leg out and you may find that that helps. But if you're able to stay in that butterfly, then that's cool. And we'll just do about 30 seconds each side. Three, two, one. Off we go. And we'll swap over. 
even letting that head fall over to the side. Remember your head is connected to your neck. Your neck is a part of your spine. So if we're curling our spine, our neck should be curled as well. Same process in our deadlifts. If we're doing a deadlift, we're trying to have a nice flat back. So our neck should be flat as well. And relax. Cool. Cool beans. So we have tackled all of the major muscle groups that are involved there in our uh, hip area. So what we'll do, we'll just do one final relaxing position, hopefully going to set us up well for bedtime. And uh, it might also relieve a little bit of pressure that builds up through the day sometimes, i.e. it's a good position to fart in. So we're going to lie on our back, we're going to grab our feet, try to flatten out our back on the floor, and we're going to sit in our happy baby position. Again, I'm talking to you through my bum here, probably not the best. Maybe if I went this way, I'd be a little bit better. So we're grabbing those feet, pulling them down like we're in the bottom of a squat. And we're just going to sit there. Happy baby. I know this is Andy's favourite stretch position. Always looks so happy when he does it. <laughs> As you allow that back to flatten against the floor, hopefully we get that big bit of pressure kind of in the groin. Now we're just going to breathe nice and deep. See if we can slow our breath down. Try to breathe in for four. Hold the breath for four. Breathe out for four. And hold that out for four. In for four, hold for four, out for four, and hold for four. Just cycle through that in your head, nice and relaxed, letting those legs start to feel heavy, let the hips start to feel heavy. That tummy expand as you breathe in and fall as you breathe out. Let that body get prepared for bed. Thank you one and all for joining in our fun tonight. Hopefully everyone's hips are now feeling gloriously mobile, free, loose, relaxed. That's great. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Anytime. All right, yep, have a good that sleep, was really guys. Really good, thanks. Yep. Perfect. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>